video where I'm going to be explaining the dictionary data structure for the AQA A-level computer science course. So in this video we're going to learn about what dictionaries are and how we use them to store key value pairs of data. We're going to talk about different ways of implementing them and also how to use them within Python. And this is going to be quite a short video, there's not a lot to say about data, uh, about dictionaries and you're probably familiar with using them in a programming language already anyway. So let's get straight to it. One of the problems with using a list to store related data is that um, we don't, if this was, for example, a particular person, person A, and we're storing their first name, last name, their maybe their age, their gender, what year group they're in, um, we don't really know what these pieces of data are. I mean, I've made intelligence guesses, intelligent guesses, but this might be potentially their middle name or it might be their preferred name or their legal name. We don't actually know. Um, and if I wanted to access any of these items of data, I would need to know the exact location where it was stored. I need to know the first name is at location zero, that the second name is location one, that the age is at location two, and so on. And if we made any changes to how this structure is implemented, all those index values would now be incorrect. So a dictionary gives us a better way of storing uh, collections of key value pairs in which values are accessed through associated keys. So this is a better version perhaps where we now have a, a pupil and this is maybe a dictionary where we've got keys and values. So rather than just storing their name we're storing those values associated with keys. So we're saying name is Joe, age is 15, gender is male, year group is 10, and now, if I want to access this particular pupil's age, I can just type something like pupil square bracket age, and it will give me 15. I don't need to know that this is location 1. Well, it's not. It's not. It's just, it's not. There are no numbered locations here. These are now associated values with keys. So this gives me an improvement over this method. And as I change the structure, if I wanted to add more key value pairs, I could, and it wouldn't mess up the index numbers that I'm otherwise using. And this is sort of what we're showing in this slide here. So again, in lists, you can access stored values by, by providing the index value of an element. So print person A1 prints out blogs. But it's far better to type print person B last name and get blogs. That's much more useful. So dictionaries allow us to associate values with keys. Uh, they also offer the following operations. So these are the things we need to be able to do with a dictionary. We need to be able to retrieve a value from a given key. We need to insert values with a new key. We need to be able to update values for a given key. We need to be able to remove a key value pair. And we need to be able to test if a key exists in the dictionary. And you will be expected to be able to do all of these things in Python or C Sharp or whatever your chosen language is when it comes to your paper one programming exam. So what can we use dictionaries for apart from just storing information about students? Well, basically any data that can be stored in a key value relationship can be stored in a dictionary. And a good example would be the frequencies of words. So doing some sort of frequency analysis or, or, or character frequency analysis if we were doing some sort of cryptographic a uh, code breaking exercise. So for example in the phrase the green green grass grows we could store the frequencies in a dictionary called word frequencies by saying and this is sort of typically how a dictionary is defined especially in Python we'd say the key the is paired with the value 1 because it appears once green is paired with the value 2 because it appears twice grass once grows once Dictionaries are also a good choice for storing the value of tiles in Scrabble games. So we can say that the tile A has a value of 1, B has a value of 3, C has a value of 3, D has a value of 2, and so on. Substitution ciphers can use dictionaries where we could substitute the value A with some symbol and B with the letter Z and C with a number. And then we can use that to encrypt a message. So any time you've got a key and a value or two, two pieces of data that could be where one can be considered the key and one can be its associated value, then a dictionary is a really good use, uh, a really good structure to do this with. And we can implement dictionaries um, 
in various ways. Now, to be fair, a programming language like Python will come with a dictionary uh, structure already, but you need to know how that's implemented under the hood. And there are several different ways of doing it. One might be using associative arrays. Um, one might be to do, use an emo a multi-dimensional array. Another very obvious candidate is to use a hash table where we can use the key we can perform the hash on the key and we can store the value and that gives us a very quick lookup of our paired value. We can also use binary search trees where each node in the tree contains both the key and the value and that provides us a, again a relatively quick and lightweight approach to storing a key with an associated value. And we're going to look at each of these in turn. So when we do associative arrays you need two arrays, one for storing the keys, one for storing the values. And the, 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 the fundamental principle is that we keep the array indexes in sync. So whatever is stored in index zero in the keys array, its paired value will be in index zero in the values array. So if we've got F name, L name and age as our keys, then in the same associated location in the values array, you will find the values Bob, Jones and 18, which are the paired values for each of those keys. So when we look up a value by key, we need to search through the array to find the key we're interested in, which is going to involve linear search. But there's only often there's only a few items, so it's it doesn't matter that it's not that quick. Um, we let's say we were looking we we wanted to find the last name. So what we would do is we would search for the keys array for L name. We find L name at index one. So we then go to the values array at index one and return what we find there, which is Jones. Now we could use a multi-dimensional array to do very much the same thing. Uh, it just joins the two together and it means we can't possibly get indexes that get out of sync, which is a real advantage. So with a multi-dimensional array, what you would do is just say that you're going to have an array which is going to contain every element in the array contains a two-element array, the first element of which is the key and the second element is the paired value. So again, if we're trying to search, if I wanted to find the age of somebody, I would do a linear search through my array looking at the first location in each inner array for the key I'm interested in, which might be age, and if I find it, then I return the second item from that same inner array, and that's going to be the paired value. So the third option I said is a hash table, and a hash table is, is, a, is a particularly obvious choice because it works on the premise of, of hashing keys and storing paired values at appropriate locations. Um, and hash tables are great if we've got large data structures. So maybe not so good if I'm just storing individuals like, uh, you know, a few bits of information about a particular student. It might be overkill to use a hash table for that. Um, but if I was storing a larger piece of data, uh, you know, in this dictionary, like a large graph, or it was some sort of machine learning application where I had a, a large amount of data to store, lots of keys, then the hash table would probably be a very good way of doing it because I would be able to insert and update and access and retrieve values very quickly by just putting the key into the hashing algorithm and pulling out the associated value. And if you want some more information about how hash tables work, then watch the video um, on that. But arrays and hash tables do have limitations. Because they are static data structures, multidimensional and associative arrays will have a fixed size. And that means that they could waste space or not provide enough space to store our key value pairs. And as we've seen, accessing items in arrays requires linear search, which has O of N performance, which is okay if it's a small number of items, but if it gets larger, is something we wish to avoid. On the flip side, using a hash table um, involves the application of a hash function every time you insert or access any items, which could be considered a little bit quote unquote heavy, or in other words, computationally expensive, especially if we're just storing a few key value pairs in a dictionary. And hash tables also, they you know, suffer from other problems with hash tables, including chaining and other collision resolution effects whenever a collision occurs, which is going to reduce their performance. So if we just want a simple dictionary, 
you know, these approaches, they work, but they're maybe not always the best. So there is an alternative way to do that, which is fully dynamic, so it can grow as it needs to, so we don't have to worry about space, and has a relatively lightweight algorithm, which enables us to get pretty good quick access times. And that is to use a binary search tree. So here's a dictionary implemented as a binary search tree. It, it works exactly the same as any other binary search tree. It's just that every node in the binary search tree, as well as having a data value, or instead of having some sort of data and then a left and right child pointer, it has two data uh, values. It has one we call the key and one we call the paired value. So every node stores a key and a value, as well as a left and right child pointer. And then when we want to access an item, it just works exactly the same as any other binary search tree. Let's say I want to get sky blue. All I need to do is start at my root and say if root if the key stored at the root is equal to the key I'm interested in, then just return it. Otherwise, if the key that I'm interested I'm looking for is bigger than the root's key, which in the case of sky blue it is, then we check is there a right hand child or is it null? If it's not null, then we just return a recursive call to the same method, um, still looking for the same key, but this time the root is the old root's right child. So we just start again here and we say, if the root.key is equal to the key I'm interested in, in this case it is, so we can return the root's value that is paired with that key. In this case, it's gonna be that tuple, which gets returned and gets returned back up the stack until eventually it is extracted from the dictionary. And notice we were able to do that. This is the benefit of all binary search trees. I was able to access sky blue without having to even consider gold, crimson, or hot pink. And this entire left side of my tree was totally ignored. And I'd be able to determine whether a key was present or not present um, by simply checking the, the expected location and if I got to a, a you know, if I got to a, a leaf node and I hadn't found what I was looking for, I would know the item wasn't in the dictionary without having to check every other item in the tree. So binary search trees offer us perhaps a, a really good option for implementing uh, dictionaries because they give us search times and access times and insertion times that are O of log two of N. This is the same as using binary search on a static array, which is really great, but we don't need any complex insertion or shuffling or sorting algorithms to make sure that our key and value pairs are inserted in the right place in order to maintain an alphabetical or some sort of ordered state. Um, the tree can grow as new items are needed, which means there's no wasted space. And there's no need for a computation expensive hashing algorithm to be applied every time an item is inserted or accessed. So let's just briefly think about how we use dictionaries in Python. This is not gonna be a particularly thorough overview of this. If you need to have a look at it, there's a link here to a tutorials point, tutorial on how to use dictionaries in Python. Just be aware there's a, a lower, there's an underscore between Python and dictionary there, so you can't see it, but there's an underscore there. Um, but basically we can declare a dictionary using curly bracket notation. We can declare it empty or we can declare it with some keys and values already. If I want to add a new item to it, I just need to state the name of the dictionary and in square brackets this time, the name of a key and put my paired value. If I do that for a value that already exists, it just updates the value. If I want to retrieve a value, again, I just use the name of the dictionary, square brackets, the name of the key, and it retrieves the value. If I want to delete something from the dictionary, then um, I can just use the del keyword to delete del, dbob will remove bob. And I can also do a test, I can use the in keyword. So I can literally do something like if Andy in D in the dictionary, and that will return true if Andy is a key, um, or false if Andy is not a key. So we can also test if something's present in the dictionary. Okay, so then here's just another example again. Here we are creating a dictionary called pupil and we're declaring it with some initial values and we have to put a comma between each set of uh, key value pairs.
and we can access any value by typing the identifier of the dictionary and then the square bracket notation as if it were a list but instead of putting an index number in you put in the key that you're interested in notice because my keys in this case are all strings we have to use quotes and we can insert a new key value pair simply by doing pupil and then the new key and the new value and that gets added into our dictionary here's an example of updating and here's an example of how we might use a loop to go through all of the items in a dictionary and this includes being able to go through all of the keys and the values in the dictionary as well so for key comma value in pupil dot items if you don't do that you can just iterate through all the keys in the dictionary but often you want to be able to access the items as well so key comma value in pupil dot items and then this would print each of the keys uh, followed by a colon and each of its paired values and finally there's a, a link here to another resource this one from w3 schools uh, which has some python exercises for using dictionaries so if you're not familiar with using dictionaries and you want to get familiar ahead of your exams please have a look at those um, those exercises they contain short simple exercises of the sorts of things that you should be able to do off the top of your head in an exam context so that's everything that we need to discuss about dictionaries i hope you have found that useful and um, that, uh, but as I say, the best thing to do with dictionaries is make sure you've got good experience of using them. You're most likely to be tested um, upon your ability to use them, probably, than describe how they work, although obviously all of that theory is important too.